Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. Today we've got part two of my review of the SG900S GPS drone. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today I've got part two of the SG900S. So I've had about five or six flights with this now. Uh, in the normal way I do this, at the end of when I finish doing what this bit, there'll be some flight footage, there'll also be some footage recorded with my GoPro and there'll also be some screen recorder footage. They're all going to be separate because I'd rather show them all on the big screen and you can get a better idea of the image. So before we go any further, one thing I must do is apologise from the first video. So, let me just take the battery out of this. So I did say it had no SD card slot. And then I kept looking and reading and it said, I thought, well, why hasn't it got an SD card? So if you look at here, I've had to smash this open because the SD card slot is buried under that bit of plastic. I don't know if you can see that. Hope you can. So if you do buy one of these, you will need to do that, I'd imagine, because it's on the circuit board. So I can't imagine how it will be any higher on yours. So, as I say, I've had to cut it open and you can get to the 1080p. So then it'll be calling 1080p. It will only be calling 720 when it's going back to your phone, and that's what made me look. So, one thing to be aware of, and I'm sorry that I didn't realise that the first time. So, so now it does record to the SD card. Uh, it records to the SD card from the transmitter. If you hit the record button on your phone, it won't record to the, t to the SD card. It'll just record to your phone. The phone will only do 720, and I must warn you now, the phone drops rates like it's going out of fashion. It only records in 15 frames per second in 720p and it drops a lot of frames. If you record to the SD card it's not too bad but you're still only getting 25 frames per second and you're only getting 3 megabits per second which is going to affect your quality tremendously. But like I keep saying I haven't bought it for the camera drone. So let's go to the flying characteristics. So I absolutely love flying it. It flies superb, you can throw it about, it's got the second speed really generous, it goes well considering it's a GPS drone. It holds 20 satellites with ease, the GPS is good on it, it's, it'll stop in mid-air where you want it to stop. You've got a bit of rock like that and that's because of the brushless motors, the brushed motors should I say, and gears. You can never, you're never going to get these things rock steady in the air like you can on brushed motors. But that aside, it does fly really, really nicely. The flight time of 10 minutes is really jet optimistic because the, uh, the best I was getting was 7, 7.5. I did have it in speed mode too, so possibly when you've got it in speed mode, when you can get better, but I was only getting 7.5 minutes. But it was a fun 7.5 minutes. It does exactly what it says in the tin flight wise. The camera, again, it's just, they're not great. It hasn't got jello as bad as the last one, but you'll see from the video footage, it's not horrendous by any means, don't get me wrong. And if you're buying this to be a cheap camera drone where you just want some cheap shots, yeah, it's going to be adequate for what you want it for. But I'd prefer they didn't cut, they didn't rave on about these cameras being 1080p because at 4 megabits per second and 25 frames per second, you are not going to get proper 1080p image out of it. However, you'll see yourself from that. I'm not going to go too much on about the camera. You'll see from yourself at the end of the video. But it does fly really well. The best thing about this is the controller is so precise. It really is. They're nicely sprung of these and there's no kind of slot. The resolution feels great on it. It really is so comfortable in your hand to hold. It really is nice. <coughs> Excuse me. The app is only good for... You'll see on the video the short little clip I've got from the screen recording. But it only seems to be good for about... 120 230 foot now that is outside my ha outside where i'm flying now which is a quite heavily populated area we a lot of jeep um a lot of wi-fi going on however it's not great i'm going to do some more tests on this because what i haven't tested is the follow me mode function or the waypoint function i'll do another video but it's not going to be for a couple of weeks where i'll take it into an open space and fly it and we can test out those features and i'll tell you what they're like but out of the so i've tested the FX8G we saw last week, and I've tested the uh, Idea 7, was it? The little orange thing. This is far better than both of those. But it's not really a camera drone. It's a good GPS drone that flies nicely. Now, what I must say at this point is, yes, I'd recommend it if you can pick it up for around 70-odd quid. 
But what you need to be aware of, for £109 you can buy the Bug five, Bugs 5W. If you haven't already seen it, I'll put a link at the end of this video going to my review on that. It's a totally different animal. It's a much, much better drone. It doesn't fold though, and it's not as cheap. And it has got br uh, brushless motors. But in so many ways it's much better. However, I'm not saying I don't like this drone, I do. I just think it's probably the best you're going to get for that price point. Because I think that is really all you're going to get for under £100. This is the best you're going to get if you want this kind of drone. I don't think you're going to get much better. There's the Vizio coming out, which I was going to order, which now I'm not going to bother. Because I think it's just going to be exactly the same or very similar to this. I can't see it being much better in the camera quality or anything like that. So, that, that, my opinion is, yeah, if that's what you're after, it's a good drone to buy. But in my opinion, I'd spend the extra and buy the Bugs 5W. But like that, I'm going to do some more testing on this so I can get you some more flight footage up. But it does fly nice. Hopefully I can show you the follow me mode and the waypoints. So I'm just going to leave you now. I'm going to put some video on the screen. The first video you're going to see is from the GoPro. Then I'm going to show you the video from the screen recorder. And then I'll show you the flight footage of this in the air. So you can see what the video quality is like. Hope you like the review. Have a fantastic weekend, have plenty of flying and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. So this is the image recorded from the screen recorder and as you can see it's a little bit jerky, the frame rate's not great and you'll see it drop in and out probably in the video you're watching. However, it's very clear on the screen and there's a lot of information going on there and I still do like the app, I just don't think the Wi-Fi range on the drone is that great. So this is the footage recorded my GoPro. Uh, I don't know if you can see very well because it is a bit of a distance away but you can probably see how smooth it flies across the air and the speed of it and hope you can get some kind of impression of that and the stability of it. So this is the image directly recorded from the camera, it's in 1080p at 25 frames per second but only 4 megabits per second and as you can see it's quite choppy. There's no real jello, it's a movement of the drone because there's no stabilisation at all on the camera and it's probably what you're going to get at this price point, there probably isn't going to be much better so this is about the standard you can expect.
thanks very much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it if you do please hit the like button and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notification bell thanks for watching